Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Terry, got a fun and exciting episode for you guys this evening because over the weekend, Shader Glass 1.0 released by Mouse MS, and it's an absolutely amazing CRT filter and pretty much every other filter under the sun application that can take something like the House of the Dead on the Model 2 emulator and go from scan lines to making it seem like an old film print right in front of your eyes. And I understand that a lot of different emulators include some built in shaders, but this is going to work over absolutely everything, including your desktop, and just going to give you the ultimate freedom to make what whatever image you want when it comes to your retro gaming and even modern gaming at that. And I will leave a link in the description below to Shader Glass. I'm going to go over a little bit of how it works in this video, but be aware that you really can't capture the menu window because of OBS. So there's a couple things that you'll just have to discover on your own, but it includes over 800 shaders from the RetroArch library, including a bunch of its own. So there's basically a look and image in here for absolutely everyone. And that is absolutely amazing. This just basically gives you more granular control over how you want to act actually articulate your image. You can do this for retro game or you can load up a brand new modern game, maybe something like Cyberpunk 2077 and just put over some scan line filters, really doing whatever you want. But honestly, the best use of this in my opinion is for all the applications that don't have shader support. Something like Model 2 emulator for the Sega Model 2, there's no filters in there, no screens whatsoever that you can apply over top the gameplay. And honestly, playing the House of the Dead with this Technicolor filter over it, that's what it is called, is just an app absolute vibe. You get hairs on the film, you get gate damage, you get everything you would expect to see off an old film print, and it just gives the game a completely different look, feel, and vibe, which is a ton of fun. You can also just play around to your heart's content on the desktop, making it look like your modern PC is a 240p screen, and that's just absolutely not what you want it to look like, but it is something you can do. Or take Violent Storm here, one of my favorite beat-em-ups from Konami. This is just the raw capture with no filtration turned on, and you can absolutely articulate any image you want out of it. You can have aperture grills, you can have shadow masks, you can have scan lines, you can kind of combine everything together into your own personal look, or you can go through some of those 800 different presets. Now do be aware that sometimes capturing can make it look a little bit different than you're actually going to see on your screen. There might be some more pattern in here that you wouldn't actually see with your eyes, and that's just a limitation of how some of the capture software works. And again, with OBS, if you want to capture it, you have to capture it as a game. You cannot actually see it on your screen if you do a full display capture, which is a little bit, not a limitation but something I had to work around when I was playing around with this. But the fun part is if you want to do an old VHS tape with some tracking issues over the top, you can do that too. Now I'm sure like 750 of the 800 filters aren't going to be for you. They can be a little bit fun to play around with, but maybe not the way you want to play games. But it is great to have that massive selection and it is just a really fun thing to play around with. And honestly, I wish I could show you in the video, but because I am on YouTube, I can't really just start showing old retro cartoons. You can just pop a retro cartoon up on YouTube, throw the shader glass window over top of it, give it that old 4x3 look from the early 90s and just watch cartoons or any other entertainment the way you remember it. Or if you just want some awesome scan lines, you can turn those on too. That really is the power of something like shader glass. It gives you the freedom and control to make the image look like whatever you want. Because I would say here, at least on Violent Storm, a couple scan lines actually do kind of even out the image and make it look a little bit closer to what you remember. And again, I know we have the scan line filters in retro arch. You can apply those anywhere you want. But this is an application that sits over top everything on your desktop you can resize the window to your heart's content and really just kind of play around with everything and you'll see here the limitation of the actual capture is that it's doing it to the filter window as well when i select it you can even go into an old school 90s basement with some wood panel frames but it's great for things like modern games as well or quote unquote modern games this is scud race on the sega model 3 and again this is with filtration on i'll go through a couple different filters and then just show you the raw footage as well as it was captured it it just gives everything a different look and it gives you the freedom to kind of decide what you want things to look like and that is fun now personally i'm not a huge user of shaders outside of the retro tank 4k and when i do captures i never turn filters on just because i'm always concerned about how youtube is going to encode them and compress them when they come out so you might get a better result when you're actually playing this on your pc than watching it as a video but you'll see here the overall even image of what scud race would look like without any of the filtration on and i would say some of this scan lines definitely give the game a different feel. In this instance, I just love the Model 3 look clean, but you can do whatever you want, and that really is the ultimate freedom of an application like this. You get to be creative, and you get to decide what look you want for every individual game. And you'll see here, you can actually capture it. You just can't see the changes over the screen when you're actually playing around with OBS, but there's so many different options here that you can 
scale through and kind of just move around. You get to pick whatever you want. There's different options, different filters, different folders, stuff for anamorphic, stuff for film, stuff for old VHS, a bunch of different presets for different televisions from back in the day. You kind of get whatever you want, and that's all going to appear over the top of the actual game in and of itself. But let's move to something like Warrior Blade Rasta Sagan 3, because this game is basically an ultra wide screen. The nice thing about shader glass is you can resize the window to fit whatever you want. So it's not 16 by 9 games, it's not 4 by 3 games, it's whatever aspect ratio you want to play your games in. Because I just scaled the window over, put on a little bit of a curvature and some actual scan lines, and now you have Rust and Saga 3 looking completely different than it did in the previous clip, even though it's the same gameplay session. And that again is an amazing result. I love the fact that it is an application that allows you to just drag and drop the window wherever you want and resize it to fit whatever you're trying to get the actual screen over and that's an awesome feature of shader glass just allowing you to articulate the window size to fit whatever content you are trying to play or watch and the best part is setting this all up is extremely quick you just download the download you go ahead and load the executable and the window pops up on screen you drag and drop it wherever you need resize it to the size you need put your filter on and then just start playing it really is one of the fastest applications when it comes to actually changing things around and you'll see here I just basically changed it up again, added some scan lines in, got rid of the curvature, and made the image a little bit more clear just with some of the presets. And that again is going to be a lot of the fun of this application, just going through all of the different options and deciding what works for you because trust me, every single game you're probably going to want to turn something different on. Moving over to something like an aperture grill, I would see this sky and that parallax scrolling looks really nice with the aperture grill over top, and the image is still nice and bright because sometimes when you add on too many filters, you can kind of darken it up to the point where you kind of feel like the color is a little bit too muted. As we go into this boss battle here i do love that aperture grill look it is such a nice effect and that really is the thing you're going to have so many different options to articulate you're going to basically be able to dial in something for every single game and it is so quick to turn off if you're just tired of it hit the x over the application and everything completely disappears and you're back to playing the game in its original presentation without any filters over it whatsoever it is basically five seconds to change everything up and that is a ton of fun and it has so many amazing features and it is great again that it really gives you the power to decide what you want just be aware again that if you're trying to capture this in obs you have to capture it as a game window not as anything else or it's not going to appear for you and there is a massive comprehensive list of options and examples as well as so just what this application can do it can incorporate itself into some emulators but you can basically just use it as a freestanding desktop application as well kind of playing around with all of the different options you'll see here incorporated in some emulation and that is a nice touch. You can pop over to the GitHub and go over all of the different granular options you can adjust. You don't have to do this. You can just use the presets, but you can also kind of decide exactly how you want to play around with things as you can strengthen and weaken some of the effects and basically just kind of play around with all of the different options. Just be aware, don't get too far into the pixel peeping because sometimes these applications mean you spend more time trying to dial things in than you actually spend in playing games. And this is 100% meant to play video games over the top of but honestly I think my favorite example here has got to be the house of the dead with the technicolor film filter on all of those scares in the gates all of the different aging on the film is very convincing it kind of changes the colors ever so slightly too and it makes it feel like you're playing some lost VHS version of something like the house of the dead and because the model 2 emulator doesn't have any filtration options included in it whatsoever it is just the raw pixel output it gives you a brand new way to play a game you've probably played dozens of times before or at least you're me and that is the fun of shader glass it makes things feel fresh and new even if they are ultimately familiar and again if you don't like a filter like this you can just pop into the menu and pick from 799 others until you decide what looks good for you and of course again depending on the graphical art style some filters are going to work better or worse but this technical to filter is just 100% for me when I play something like the house of the dead but if I bring that menu up again pixelated because it is being captured via OBS I can change everything around and find something else that won't work for me and that really is the great part here i just need to throw a coin in because i couldn't control it while picking these things out but you can go back through the menu and maybe if you just want to throw some light scan lines over the top giving it that crt look and a little bit of curvature you can do that too and i'd say both images are absolutely outstanding it is just down to your own personal taste at least for house of the dad but definitely check shader glass out it is free i left a link to the itch page down below so you can go ahead and play around with it to your heart's content because trust me this is one of my favorite new applications of 2025 but we're done i'll see you next time bye bye